Yesterday was Dhanteras in India, a festival that comes right before Diwali. A lot of Indians like to buy gold on this day. It's seen as very auspicious. Just ask the RBI. Even they have jumped in on the Dhanteras craze. As you know, the RBI is India's central bank, the Reserve Bank of India. Yesterday, they revealed a key development. The RBI secretly shipped 102 tons of gold from London to India. 102 tons of gold. And this was not a purchase. This gold already belonged to the RBI. It was only stored in London. But imagine the logistics. Again, we're talking about 102 tons of metal, a bit like transporting 20 adult elephants over thousands of kilometers. So how did the RBI do it? Naturally, they have not revealed everything, but reports say special flights were chartered, security was stepped up, and once in India, all taxes and customs were waived. Overall, a successful mission. The RBI has vaults in Mumbai and Nagpur. Chances are the gold will be stored there. But why was this, de this decision taken now? To answer that, we must go back to the 1990s when India was facing a financial crisis. It was running out of dollars to import goods. So the, the then government of India decided to pledge its gold. We're talking about multi-million dollar loans. You can't get them in your local gold market. You need global trade centers like New York or London. So the RBI sent tons of gold to the Bank of England. This gold was pledged there in exchange for a loan. Of course, the loans have long been repaid, but India's gold remained there. And logistically, it did make sense. The gold would be near the London bullion market. So if the need came, it could be easily accessed. Then why is it being brought back now? Well, because of two reasons. One, India's foreign reserves are very healthy now. They stand at $688 billion, enough to cover more than 11 months of imports. So the RBI is more confident. A repeat, a repeat of the 1990s looks virtually impossible now. Secondly, because of geopolitics. Yes, Britain is on good terms with India, but equations can always change. And if they do, a big chunk of our gold will, gold will be on British soil. What if they decide to freeze it? Or worse, sell it off? That's what the West is doing to Russia. When the Ukraine war started, Russia had around $600 billion in reserves. That's gold plus currencies plus assets. Nearly half of that was held abroad, mostly in Western countries, $300 billion. And what did the West do? They froze those $300 billion in assets, meaning Russia could not access its own wealth. Now, don't get me wrong. India and Britain are not going in that direction. But it's always better to have your assets at home, especially if your economy is robust. The RBI is thinking along the same lines. They have around 800 and 855 tons of gold in reserves. 855 tons. Around 510 tons of that is now held at home. So more than half is within India. A similar operation was done in the month of May this year as well. The RBI brought 100 tons of gold from London. And now another 102 tons. Should we expect more in the future? Reports say the government is open to such operations, but not this year. And it's not just about repatriating gold. It's also about stocking up. The RBI bought 32 tons of gold from April to September. Gold made up 8% of the reserves in the month of March. Now it makes up more than 9% of India's reserves. So clearly, the Reserve Bank is on a buying spree. The question is why? Because gold is a safe asset. It is not volatile. It is reasonably liquid. And it can diversify your reserves. You may have noticed that in recent times. When there is a war or natural disaster, gold prices remain stable. Or they increase, which is very different from currencies or oil, which can go either way. So it's a good backup for central banks. It's good for them to have more gold. In fact, central banks hold nearly 20% of all gold ever mined. We have a list. The US has around 8,000 tons of gold. Germany has more than 3,000 tons of gold. Italy has more than 2,400, and so does France. But guess who outranks all of them? Indian households. Ordinary Indians are sitting on 27,000 tons of gold. I'll repeat that, 27,000 tons of gold. Yes, it's clearly an obsession. But in those countries, gold makes up almost 70% of government reserves. Compare that to developing nations. In China, it's 5%. In India, as I said, it's 9%. So expect this landscape to keep evolving. Of course, that's a discussion for another day. Today, it's all about celebrating this reversal.
from pledging gold abroad in the 1990s to proudly bringing it back home now. It's a story of India's economic resilience and rise.